after the Civil War, there were about a quarter million school-aged children in Wisconsin um, at that time. And um, ultimately, it was agreed uh, in, the in the state government that it was the state's responsibility to ensure the kids had capable and consistently trained teachers um, to instruct them. And so as, done, as this was done across the whole country, the Wisconsin legislature looked to France at a, at a school called L'Ecole Normale um, that was sort of um, pioneering a new approach to teacher education. So these so-called normal schools then would not only have instruction for teachers, but they would also have a school of children located on campus um, so that the teachers in training had opportunities to practice on these kids, right? So the idea of the legislature then was to put one of these state normal schools in each congressional district in the state. The first one was put at uh, Platteville, uh, the second one was at Whitewater, and then the state turned to the fifth district, which at this time we were part of the fifth congressional district, um, and asked for bids from different communities. Uh, Berlin, Nina Menasha, Amro, Fond du Lac, and Oshkosh all submitted uh, bids. Uh, the communities were expected to provide the land uh, that the school would be built on and also front some money for the construction of the building, about thirty to $35,000, which today is about a half a million dollars. Um, there was some unfriendly competition among the different communities. Uh, there were charges that the Oshkosh Committee had um, created a scandalous pamphlet that they would distribute around uh, disparaging the other communities. Um, in the end, though, Oshkosh won the school. It was really no contest. We were the third largest city in the state at that time. We were right on the railroad. We had a really uh, burgeoning, uh, bustling lumber business here. And so it was, it was clear this is you know, an important community in the 5th District uh, needed to have the normal school. Um, now, after the announcement, the city's first task was to find the land that the school was going to be uh, placed on. Um, there were several different sites that were considered. Uh, the corner of East Irving and Evans Street, so just a block from the hospital, uh, the old hospital, was one idea. Another was the current site of Lincoln Hall, formerly Lincoln School. That was another site. And of course, this place was a site as well. At that time, this was all farmland here. Each site had its champions, and they didn't get along, and they couldn't agree. Um, there were also complaints starting in the city about all the cash that the city had to outlay. Um, and you know, the, so they were dithering so much that in uh, March of 1868, the legislature, through a bill, forced the community of Oshkosh to hold a referendum to decide once and for all, do they want a special levy to generate the money required to um, help build the normal school? So essentially this was a plebiscite on if we wanted a school at all. Um, there were lots of arguments being made in the paper, um, you know, the, the proponents uh, were arguing for all the financial benefits that would come with having a school here, but there were a lot of people who were complaining that that money could be better spent on infrastructure, uh, particularly paving of streets. So nothing's changed in Oshkosh at all, right? Um, in the end, of course, the, the uh, proponents won out. The, the vote was actually a two to one margin for the school, and pretty soon this location was then picked. It was built on, light, on a site just behind where Dempsey Hall is today. Uh, the prolific local architect William Waters was selected to design the building. Um, and it was actually completed in time for um, school to start in 1870. This is what it looked like in 1870. Unfortunately, the state didn't have any money to actually run the school in 1870. So it sat unoccupied for a full year. So George Albee was the first president of this school. He was a very serious and religious man. He personally tested every student who applied um, to make sure that they had the uh, you know, education to, to, and the, you know, they were prepared to, to come to school here. They were, students were largely from the surrounding counties. Um, you know, at that time there was no universal high school in Wisconsin, so it was, um, very common for children as young as 14 to be ready to find a career in teaching. So you had 14 year olds applying. You had also had people who had been teaching for many, many years uh, applying at the same time. 
Um, students who passed Albee's examinations would be admitted to the school for anywhere from a two-year to a four-year program of study. Those who didn't pass could join uh, what was called the preparatory department here. So for a year they could come to school here and get the sort of be lifted up, elevated to the level um, that they would be to, uh, to enter the normal school. Um, so the first term we had 42 students here in 1871 and eight faculty members. Students paid no tuition, uh, books cost a dollar per term, and uh, room and board could be found in the community and boarding houses for anywhere between two to four dollars a week. So this would be about 150 to 300 dollars in today's money per month to live. In addition, again, to the normal and the preparatory departments, we did operate a fully functional private elementary and middle school here. These were children who were instructed by the faculty, but then were practiced on by the normal students. Uh, we would operate this school for a century here on campus. Among the first faculty of um, the school here was Rose Swart. Among the first students to graduate was Emily Webster, who after graduation turned around and joined the faculty. And of course, we have buildings on campus named after both of those women. As the school grew in the late 1800s, the building was added on to and added on to until it really became a rabbit's war and that confused new students. Even in the early 1900s, there were plans to start tearing down portions of the building and replace them with new structures. Uh, but fate had a different idea in mind. In uh, wee hours of March 22nd, 1916, a fire was discovered in one of the building's many attics by a custodian. It gave time then for students and faculty to rush in and out of the building to try to save anything that wasn't nailed down. And there's a story about Frederick Clo, you know, we name another building after, who um, was rushed in to, to save as much of the library as he could. So he had people underneath the windows with blankets out there stretched out, and he went and he would find books and toss them out the window to be saved below. Now the story is he was a very discerning man, Clo, so he would go to the, to the shelves and consider each book if it was worthy of saving or not. And he would look at it and say, oh, that's a good one. He'd throw it out the window. If it wasn't, he'd put it back on the shelf <laughs> to be consumed by fire later. In the end, the entire building, other than what they pulled out of it, was a loss. Um, the president at the time, President Keith, was racing around town talking to local churches to try to secure space uh, for classes. And um, after one day, just one day of missing classes, we were back in business. And we, um, so our students went to churches all for the re remaining part of that semester. And then the next year, um, the students at Oshkosh High School heroically gave up half their day so that they could end school early and allow the normal students to come in and take classes. Yeah, it was nice of them, wasn't it? But uh, built in the original um, normal school's place, kind of, just in front was Dempsey Hall. You know, the building had been planned, actually, um, to sit in front of the building. In fact, if you look, it's hard to see in this picture, and we're so far away, but when you look at the pictures of the fire, you can actually see the foundation of Dempsey Hall had already been completed that fall. And they were going to build the building in that, ne that coming summer. The idea was they were going to connect Dempsey Hall with a passageway to the old building and then slowly tear down parts of the old building um, when they could. But we can still see a testament to the original building's um, plan in these four grotesques up here halfway up the tower. So those grotesques represent physics, chemistry, biology, and agronomy. You can see the little dudes doing different things there.